Look, late round quarterbacks are so important in fantasy, and we're going to talk about the the second tier of quarterbacks. And there is great discussion today on what we should expect in 2020. You don't want to miss the truth about quarterbacks. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Oh, we're back on track. Ha ha. Small hiatus. <laughs> welcome into the show. Lots going on. Thursday, January 30th. Super Bowl is almost here. Jason might have the hiccups. I'm not sure yet. He hasn't spoken. I'm Ma- good. Mike I'm- saved somebody's life at lunch today. Apparently, that I wasn't did. there. It sounded made up. It was. <laughs> Let me tell you why it sounded made up. Because <laughs> you, the part of me saving someone's life. Well, okay, you could start there. I, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, and this is this is true, and you guys can recount the tale. But I mean, I, I imagine, you know, you're in that situation where somebody's choking, somebody needs your help. I'm going to help. You know, you just think you will, and I, I'd certainly imagine a world where Mike steps in. And helps, and apparently that took place today. But the real reason that I wasn't sure you were telling me the truth was because when I got back into the office, I had a lunch appointment. Mm-hmm. You guys were busy trying to figure out how many states you actually could <laughs> recognize on a map. Yeah, we it, it, we got to where South Dakota and North Dakota. Jason thought were, I think, near Tennessee. I, you know, I was curious if they might be over <laughs> by the Virginias, <laughs> but they're not. They might be the Carolinas. They have them too. Any of the double said North Carolina, yeah, South Carolina, they're, they're North all Dakota, over the South place. Dakota. But then so all tell the t- me what I mean actually happened. This is pretty fresh. I mean, this was like half an hour ago. Yeah, ju- just a little while ago, we are at uh, lunch. We're sitting in a booth, and the booth behind us, behind me, Mike was facing it. Uh, a gentleman starts struggling and gasping and and you know whatnot, and Mike hopped right up into action. Asked if he needed help. The dude says yes. Boom. Mike's on his back. Heimlich. 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 Success. Life. He was there with his family, his wife, his two yes. daughters. I wish the- I immediately was- asked for $300. Yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> they said no. He put the food back in the mouth. I was picturing the news story that hits channel, you know, the local channels later today. That's local homeless man saves. <laughs> <laughs> saves the life. Um, but that's incredible. I all I did today was spill a smoothie on myself. So, which was also heroic that you shared your spill with the world. It was a big. Uh, it's on my Instagram, and it was a big moment for me because I had been considering crimes of passion for my future, <laughs> mm. and I realized what a mess. What a mess that would be. Too much work. Too much work. Uh, <laughs> I see. I don't know if it was Al Borland or Judge Giamatti. One of our producers. <laughs> through it's Heimlich time into the show doc today. Now, Mike didn't, he's not going to jump in with it's Heimlich time. No, because then the I just life see saver, Yeah, the lifesaver doesn't do that. But it was Heimlich time today. Unbelievable. All right, a couple of headlines before we get back into the quarterback truth uh, episodes. Bunch of names to talk about today. Patrick Mahomes, Kyler Murray, uh, Aaron Rodgers, breaking down the truth of their seasons. But we got some big stuff coming up. Mm-hmm. We've got the Super Bowl on Sunday. Sunday is when the ultimate draft kit pre-sales open up. It, it happens every year. We celebrate the Super Bowl with the lowest possible price on the number one tool for getting yourself ready to go for your upcoming drafts. I mean, we are going to have so much fun between now and your drafts in August. And the number one tool, the resource that uh, our listeners have leaned on for years now the ultimate draft kit is back and is better than ever. And yeah. it's not it's not just that. I mean, you get the lowest price, which congratulations. I mean, that, that's that's the way you got to do it. Better than the highest price. That's that's what they See? say. <laughs> that's what my mama told me. Yeah. The lowest is way better than the highest price. But you're automatically entered into a, a, a contest runs between the Super Bowl and March. Mar- March 1st. March 1st with, with a couple of really cool prizes, including the first, nay, I, I apologize, the second behind Captain Sink, 
the returning champion for the Listener League, but the second spot into the Fantasy Footballers Listener League. The get, first one we are willingly giving away. Captain yes. Sink claimed his. He forced his way but back. this is the first one, the uh, illustrious Curse Listener you, League. Curse you, Saquon Barkley. But the point is, go check it out. We'll send an email out, but Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, celebrate by getting yourself ready to go, ultimatedraftkit.com. And if you're, if you're doing that now and saving all the, all the cash on this, check out the combo because yeah. the combo for the DFS pass as well, it's crazy discounted right now at this time of year. So yes, if you're going to get that. $30 off. Yeah, it's 30. a very big discount. And even if you don't play DFS, there's a ton of cool tools and articles in there that are helpful through the year. All right. Well, uh, we get to do this one more time. The Super Bowl is here. Beat the Ballers, presented by Monkey Knife Fight. All right, beattheballers.com. Check it out. Our final Beat the Ballers contest event with the Super Bowl. Many of you out there made some money off of the fact that Jason and I have not shown up in uh, a big way in this contest. I mean, you've, you've, you've got your there. entries. You've got your entries. But now, look at this. I mean, it's, we're not on our own, Jason. No, we get to band together the three best minds in fantasy. We're making a... <laughs> Whoa, oh, I mean... Oh, were you being yeah. legit? And we're making a super team that will not be beat. We're taking the prize pool home for the Super Bowl this week. Well, and, and to be clear about that, there's a $10,000 prize pool. If we beat everybody, that money gets donated to St. Jude. Yes, if you beat us, you get to share that prize pool. We're also, each- my name is St. Jude. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it will go to just so you, Jude. Just so people are aware, Mike saved a life today with the Heimlich. <laughs> Jason stole money from children. That's where we're at. Um, oh, well done. But uh, if you beat us, you share the $10,000 prize pool, beattheballers.com for your entry. We each picked one player. So your three players have to beat our three players. The three of us. I am going with Travis Kelsey for the Super Bowl. Travis Kelsey has been a touchdown machine in these playoffs. He gives you that the upside that, you know, go-to guy around the end zone. Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey. I'm taking Kelsey. I'll let you go, Jay. Uh, I spoiled my pick earlier saying it was going to be Raheem Mostert. Wait, but did you change? It is not Raheem Mostert. He let me down when I, like I picked pivot. him. And I am pivoting to the other superstar tight end in the game, George Kittle, I think this game is going to be, or maybe it's just hopeful, wishful thinking, but I think this could turn into a higher scoring game despite two good defenses and where the Chiefs are susceptible is at the tight end position. So yeah. George Kittle is going to have himself a game. All right, so we got two tight ends. <laughs> yeah, We're off to a great start. I, that is pretty funny, but it's just the way you, when you're mapping this out, you got to project what do we believe the storyline of the game is. And I agree with Jason that – there's going to be more points. And the way you beat Kansas City, it's through the tight end, and they just happen to have, if if not the best tight end in the game, one of the elite tight ends in all of football. You so, teach us, oh, wise one. You've beaten us each and every week. This is your and I believe your that, world. I believe Kansas City will win. And if so facto, they have more points. And, and really, it – it could be, you know, random. It could be Sammy. It could end up being Damian Williams who gets the touchdowns. But if you look back over where San Francisco has given up some fantasy points, because they have not given up very many over the course of the year, they've been more uh, more lenient towards fantasy wide receivers. So I will take the number one wide receiver for Kansas City. I will take Tyreek Hill. Which all this means, if you build a lineup with Raheem Mostert, he's going to crush my soul and win. <laughs> Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, Tyreek Hill. That's our BeatTheBallers.com team. If you beat it, you get to share part of that $10,000 prize pool. You're not going to. And we appreciate uh, Monkey Knife Fight for the uh, playoff promotion here, giving some free cash out to our listeners. All right, back into the truth. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. All right, let's start with number seven on our list. And if you want to hear the top six finishers, the truth broken down about their seasons, that's on the last episode, the uh, first quarterback episode. Patrick Mahomes finished at number seven. He only played 14 games. 
Uh, his consistency rank was number five. And again, for consistency, we throw out the games that he missed. I'm assuming we did not throw out the game he got injured in. No, Correct. because you started him. So in that case, uh, you know, that factors in. But a consistency rank of number five, you know, altogether, if you have – if you take ADP out of the equation, if you just look at Patrick Mahomes as a whole and you say, you know, was this a good season for Patrick Mahomes? Yeah, it was a good season for him. It was a good season for fantasy. It was not last year, and it was not the kind of season you needed if you invested – you know, the 20th overall draft pick. So if you drafted Mahomes early, you spent three weeks thinking you had unlocked, you had broken the game. Yes. I recall as very vividly spending the first three weeks as over our off season. It was preaching the late round quarterback philosophy saying like Patrick Mahomes is going to regress. There is, there's just no way that he could possibly do what he did last year, which was 5,000. And it was how many touchdowns was it? 50. 650. Fifth, like in my head, it was. I think it was fifty, but it was that's, fifty. That's impossible. But it was. It was fifty touchdowns. It was five thousand yards, fifty touchdowns. There's no way that Patrick Mahomes can do that again. And then we spent the first three weeks going, "He's oh, going to do oh, it." Again. Holy crap, he's going to do it again. <laughs> but it happened. the The natural regression. It it hit. He was still awesome, like Andy had said. If you throw out his injury game, he just has three prefer two performances where you're really upset. And one where you're mildly disappointed. Other than that, he was fantastic. Look, he's, he's, I think he's the best quarterback in football. I, I agree. I think he's the best. Everyone was happy with him when he was starting a full game. You, you were disappointed in a large part by the games missed, but the regression was true. If you were to take what he did this season and then extrapolate that for a 16-game season, he still would have only thrown 30 touchdowns. And that, I mean, that's chopping off 20 touchdowns right. from the season before. 30 is still very good. Also, if you take off the injured game, he would have been consistency quarterback number three. So he's obviously, he was great this year. He's going to be great next year. Might be a, a much better value, will be a much better value uh, in the draft next year. I don't not, think not after he, if he wins the Super Bowl and we come in with uh, MVP, then Super Bowl champion, you're going to be paying too much I for Patrick Mahomes. Fourth round. That's where I'll set the over-under. But, I mean, as an actual quarterback, uh, no quarterback better at avoiding sacks against the blitz. One of the things I looked at, he was sacked twice on 109 blitzes. You can't do that against Patrick Mahomes. Uh, he turned the ball over only seven times on 544 plays. And he's got he's got the intangible or the uh, – I guess that's not the right word for it. He does have the intangibles, but he also has the externals. He's got the Kelsey, Tyreek, Andy Reid – um, McCall Hardman. McCall Hardman, yeah. The Lizard I mean, King. There's him as He's well. He's there. <laughs> so, uh, Patrick Mahomes, the truth is that great quarterback, good fantasy quarterback, but the r touchdown regression is what hit. Yeah, and what's interesting for him projecting in the next year, so he was at the 8.6 touchdown percent. The, that, that's impossibly high. We've seen when, when players are essentially over seven, they – historically their their touchdown percent drops by about two percentage points, which is massive, and that happened. He dropped down to 5.4. Now, a 5.4 touchdown percent, so every 5.4% of his attempts turn into a touchdown, I think that actually might be a little bit low for who Patrick Mahomes is as a person and as a quarterback, so that, that could go up. If he's back in the high 30s, maybe even – flirting with throwing 40 touchdowns that won't that won't surprise uh, me next year but that's still if you're drafting that guy in the fourth round once again you're saying he you you have to do this because I could draft someone late and easily replace uh, most of your value you said the over under was in the fourth round and, right and if he's in the fourth round I will probably draft him really really yeah Look I, at you you know the one thing that hasn't been brought up too is that yes there was the injury so you lost like the back half of the Denver game and you and then he was out for two two weeks but you also lost mobility, something that right. he does bring to the table, and we've seen it in recent weeks. We've seen it in the playoffs, um, becoming more comfortable with the knee. We didn't know if his season was going to be over in week seven. He came back, but it he looked was, like it was. You know, he only ran for 218 yards this year. For him, he's the kind of guy that can get into the three four hundreds uh, and, and make those things happen. More rushing touchdowns, a possibility next year as well. So uh, it's interesting to hear Jason say that uh, that he would take him in that range and. Um, here, here's the nice thing. What about third round? No. 
I, you, Fourth round is when you'll usually you'll get the in sweats. fantasy. The, there's a break in talent of the wide receivers and running backs between the third and fourth, where I'm willing to take the gamble on you know on that special season. Exactly. Yeah, makes sense. Number eight, Kyler Murray actually ended the season at number eight at the quarterback position. Uh, consistency rank was 17. Mm. Hello, rookie. Yeah. Um, he was drafted as the quarterback 11. His his average draft position shot up. Uh, heading into fantasy drafts in August. But this was almost, I mean, this was almost a guarantee. Like a projecting Kyler Murray's season might not have seemed like an easy thing to do, but it really wasn't hard to do. When you take the aspect of the rushing yardage, you know, he's over 500 yards, and that was probably going to happen. I mean, I don't think anybody really doubted that element of his game. If you mix that with just being the starting quarterback in Arizona, I mean, he only threw 20 touchdowns. He threw for fewer than 4,000 yards. But when you mix in the rushing totals, you're going to end up as a top 10. It, it's happened time and time again with these rushing quarterbacks and uh, or rushing-capable quarterbacks. So right. Kyler Murray, 44% of the time good games, 25% great, a big 38% bust percentage. And you kind of – you just didn't know when he was going to show up because he had some really good games. Like this Against San Francisco, Francisco twice. Yeah. And then he had these stinkers in games you thought he would do well in New York, facing the Giants. Ends up the 26th quarterback on the week. I mean, not what you expected him to do in that game. I, I certainly think a lot of it was the fact that, I mean, he's a rookie, and, and he showed that from time to time. There's also, you know, that, that quintessential rookie wall of did, did things get harder at the end of the season? Right. Because when you look at – they had a very late bye week. It was week 12 when their bye week came. Up until that point, he was consistent – consistency ranked number seven so he's actually pretty consistent for a he quarterback was the qb5 through week 11 exactly then after that bye from weeks 13 through 17 those five games he wasn't i mean he wasn't even in the top 15 quarterbacks one time through that stretch so the end of the season was really bad for him that skews how we look at him and you have to ask is this uh people had more tape and they were able to scheme him out was this a you know a, the rookie wall but the fact that he's a rookie and has the ability to improve and has the rushing baseline, I am more inclined to believe yep. that the first 11 weeks of the season is closer to what the consistency will be going forward than the end of the season. His, the historical pedigree of what he was able to accomplish this year, he's in fantastic company. There's only six quarterbacks that have thrown over 3,500 yards and rushed for over 500 yards in a season. That's Cam Newton. Who's Twice. Done, who's three times. Wow. Yeah, Cam Newton, Randall Cunningham, Dante Culpepper, Russ Wilson, Deshaun Watson, and now Kyler Murray. But, like, but Mike. Yeah, yes, voice of public opinion. You didn't say Lamar Jackson. Because he didn't pass for – he didn't hit my uh, my passing yard threshold. Yeah, okay. In I his rookie wanted. season? Yeah. No, uh, ever. Oh, ever. Yeah. Just those seasons at all. Correct. Yeah, well, no, now you got me double – <laughs> no, it, no, you're right. I the 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 passing threshold was the issue. Lamar just, Jackson was had 3,100 yards. Right. So I, I knew people would point that out. So it, it's it, he's with elite company, and his touchdown rate, which we just referenced for Patrick Mahomes, he was at 3.7 percent. Quarterbacks who had over 300 attempts, the the average, 4.7. Like his touchdown rate is impossibly low. The only quarterbacks with 300 attempts that had a lower touchdown rate. Jared Goff, Kyle Allen, Mitch Trubisky, and Andy Dalton. Well, that was the comedy out here in Arizona the for the beginning of the zone. year. They couldn't figure the red zone out with Cliff Kingsbury. But all again, you're looking at that, uh, you know, a rookie quarterback in an offense that's can you know nobody knows Kyler Murray better than Cliff Kingsbury, pretty much, and how to use him. And you didn't have the kind of weapons. You lost Christian Kirk for part of the year. David Johnson became an afterthought. Other wide receiving options. Let me read some names. Demir Bird. <laughs> Farrell Cooper. Yeah. Mm. You know, these are the, the types of players he was throwing to on a regular basis. Uh, 74-year-old Larry Fitzgerald, who I love. but They should have drafted know, a wide receiver in the second round. Named Andy Isabella and then not played him? Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> but uh, the future is bright for Kyler Murray, uh, without question, especially with the rushing baseline numbers. And so he'll be a top-10 guy next year, no doubt. Yeah, the, the question will be his ADP. Because yep. I, I really think... Across the fantasy industry, rightly so, because we're, I think all three of us are going to be really interested in what Kyler Murray can do next year. Especially, but if they make every, a splash. everyone will be too. 
If 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 the Cardinals draft right. a high profile wide receiver, a CD Lamb, right. all of a sudden the 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 talk will be mm-hmm. I mean, look at the leap that Lamar made passing wise right. in year two, just adding some weapons, uh, you know, maturing Mark Andrews, Hollywood Brown, that type of thing. Before we move to the next quarterback, part of the truth, want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped. You still have some more truth for us. I do. Yeah, right there. <laughs> what the truth about Manscaped? Mm-hmm. The truth about Manscaped. Look, you've heard us talking for for the entire season. You've heard me talking about the lawnmower 2.0. It's a very smooth ride. It absolutely gets the job done. We know what happens after 2.0, fellas. Uh, it's got to be like 2.5. Yeah, 2.2.6. 2.6. Nay, we're up to 3.0. Oh, the lawnmower 3.0. Wait a minute. We're 3. up. To, oh, baby, we're talking. We're up to the next level they are they've got cutting edge ceramic blades to prevent manscaping Ooh. accidents they're taking away the problems with the nicks and the scrapes and the lawnmowers 3.0 battery will last up to 90 minutes to get this it's got an led fellas nelly you ever you ever I've had heard an of LED? that yeah no that's great when you're uh, grooming grooming the sensitive areas you need to you're see what you're illu- doing illumination is key is that what you're saying i'm just saying you could be in a dark closet if you want to do it because okay. there's an led for I don't 90, recomm- you could be there for 90 <laughs> minutes apparently I, I don't recommend it you could do a 90 minute battery but life i've got the lawnmower look we producer al borland we just got him equipped with the 3.0 you guys each, you in. each have your own he said yeah we don't share okay, one all right i don't recommend that either get your own yeah but he came in he said mike you're right. It's smooth. Get 20% off plus free shipping with code FOOTBALLERS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code FOOTBALLERS. And as always, your nethers will thank you. That was not dot comb, not comb. like a hair comb? No. Okay. All right. When you're watching a game at home, you know what makes it a little bit better? You want to feel like you're there? We're talking about Sonos. You've heard us talk about it before, but here, here's the truth. Uh I got Sonos in my home. We've got some of the Sonos moves where I can take it out into the garage, back by the pool. The sound, look, you don't need, this is not rocket science. When you when you get a Sonos product, you open the box, you already know the truth. Just in the, the packaging and the weight and the fact that they've designed this thing meticulously, um, you know, this is inside out design. This is a, a, a perfect product. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I got one room in the house that isn't Son- Sonos up. Oh, and we call that the subtitle room because it's just not a very it's just not a very good experience. But we got Sonos everywhere else and I I can just add one onto the Wi-Fi, make it easy. Uh they work together. You can customize your sound system. I absolutely love it. All three of us were Sonos out. You can go to sonos.com to learn more about the products that they have. I highly recommend you check out that Sonos move as well. That's sonos.com, S O N O S.com. Back in the truth. Now, the last time we talked about this player, uh, you know, it wasn't always in the best light at the end of the season because sometimes, <sighs> sometimes our advice, we have to stick to the truth, right? Right, right. And uh, play, play, cut, play, play, cut. We're talking about Aaron Rodgers, and we it came true. Play, play, cut came true, and it was a vulnerable decision. But Aaron Rodgers was not the kind of player. I mean, listen to this. Number nine is where he finished. That's even. Hard to comprehend from where we've been with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, he was always one or two. But listen, consistency ranking of 25. There were 40 quarterbacks that finished with at least one top 12 week. There are 32 NFL teams. Aaron Rodgers was number 25 when it came to consistency for fantasy. He busted Mm. 63% of the time when you played him. What? He was good 38% of the time. He scored almost 10 fewer fantasy points against top defenses. The recipe for the – the and I got Aaron Rodgers sitting right in front of me here on the table. We so love I, Aaron. I'm really sorry, Aaron. I feel like I'm saying He's mean things. Mike's He's new my best new best friend. Yes. But the fact of the Anything matter is, is, possible. is you must learn to accept new realities in fantasy football. Otherwise, you're going to get buried with old ones. This was not uh, for no reason. This isn't just Aaron Rodgers got old. If you look at the passing and rushing volumes of Mike McCarthy versus the new regime that came in, they wanted to run the ball more. They did. Uh, the the you know think about how many touchdowns Aaron Jones got an outlandish number. 
those, you know, when he runs the ball in for a touchdown, Aaron Rodgers doesn't get right. to throw the ball. Aaron Rodgers was always one of those guys where when you got down near the five and inside the ten, they threw at a higher pace than the rest of the league. I have those numbers, Jason. Him. So why I was hoping. Hit him. Hit him. Hit him. Give him to me good. Uh, wider, <laughs> I got you covered. Uh, <laughs> why why I God. was <laughs> interested in Rodgers coming into this year were uh, two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> two years ago, there was this weird plummet in, in Aaron Rodgers' red zone attempts. And I thought, that's really bizarre because, Jay, you were right. When they would get inside the 20, you had Aaron Rodgers. And you had a, a running game that was always ho-hum. Sometimes you had some good players, good players in Green Bay, but Aaron Rodgers is lethal in the red zone. He saw those numbers drop drastically in 2018. And then 2019, you saw that volume actually return to a level where we're used to it with Aaron Rodgers. I'm talking uh, 61 attempts two years ago, back up to 78 attempts this last year. You know how many touchdowns he threw, though? 16 in both of those years, 16 touchdowns inside the red zone, despite a massive upgrade in terms of volume inside throwing inside the 20 quarterbacks with more red zone attempts than Aaron Rodgers Two quarterbacks with more red zone touchdowns than Aaron Rodgers eight. And I, is this it, it, what I don't know the answer to is, is this a product of this particular offense? Is it Aaron Rodgers or was it simply just, you had Devontae Adams as the only reliable pass-catching threat on the team. Devontae Adams is an elite red zone weapon, but did they just need someone and, else who could help out as well? And he well, missed. Yeah. He missed. Uh, you know, Devontae and Adams, Adams was, gone was missing for a while. time too. If you played Aaron Rodgers in weeks four, seven, eight, and thirteen, he was the old Aaron Rodgers for you. Yeah, uh, I think we all remember the Oakland game where he just lit the field yes. on fire. He still has that in him. And like you said, I mean, if you give him some weapons around the goal line or you just have the natural regression of, you know, the uh, touchdown opportunities for the running back, Aaron Jones, what he did, you know, maybe you get back to a, a more consistent place with Aaron Rodgers. I think you certainly can over the next handful of years. But it must be illustrated that Aaron Rodgers is not the player of yesteryear. And – to put, let me let me put it this way, and and to confirm, Jason does appear to have hiccups. They Is just, that what that? Uh, I believe you, I believe you so. snuck one out. I, you of all people, has to have a jar of peanut butter underneath there that you can just probably. There's isn't that how you get rid of them? Like a spoonful of peanut butter? Ask, peanut butter cures the hiccups. Yeah, you, nev you've never, never heard, heard that? that. Oh, no, the the foot clam will come out in support of me here. Probably. Yeah, you could do a spoonful. Ah! Oh my God! You tried to scare. You him. didn't scare the hiccups out of me, but you did just crash <laughs> seven hundred cars across the country listening to this wonderful I'm podcast. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Footland. You could do honey too, a spoonful of honey. What if you just do peanut butter and honey and then make a delightful sandwich? Oh, that that's perfect. And put bread on it. <laughs> Look, if you eat a peanut butter and honey sandwich right now on the air, oh, uh, we so we'll disgusting. crash crash some more cars. Uh, but you have to accept the reality of Aaron Rodgers, and you brought up earlier. You would look at Patrick Mahomes in the fourth round, and you'd say, look, I'm taking him here because of the potential that I have. Do either of you believe that if you took Aaron Rodgers at a value place, right? He was the quarterback three last year. He's not going to be that this year. But if you took him at a place of value, right? Let's say he's pick 70, okay? Are mm. you looking at him and saying that I actually have the potential of getting that week four, seven, eight, thirteen 13 more often than not? Or are you moving on from that there's, mindset with him? There's... I, I feel like there is almost no area where I would draft Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is the worst type of quarterback you can own. His name is so big and his talent <laughs> it's the is, mental commitment to it's starting him. The mental commitment to being able to cut him if you need to cut him and move on for someone else on the waivers. Who's going to do that with Aaron Rodgers? It's impossible. When you invest in him even if it's a you know a ninth round pick and you grab him you, I mean, if you've got that wherewithal to say, look, I'm grabbing him. I like his beginning of, of the season schedule. That's great. But I don't think that Aaron Rodgers in this new system at this age with his receiving core is going to be a consistent week in and week out performer. Boom. I just put Jerry Judy on this team, Jason. Oh, now, now you got me a little. Now in the ninth round, I'll be scooping him up, right. but he won't go in the ninth round. You, you do that. I like your point, though. If you draft Joe Namath, 
How are you not starting Joe Namath every week? Exactly. You're not going to bench Joe Namath? He, he, here's something surprising. I, I wanted to see while while you guys were talking what the splits <laughs> were with. <laughs> with Joe Namath? I don't know like, why. What? I'm just, I, the legendary <laughs> name. You gone, That's like, all I went with. Joe Montana. I mean, there's, there's some What's more. What's wrong with Joe Namath? <laughs> not, you wrong. of all people, Mike, you and Joe Namath, I think, would get along. We probably would. You'd probably wear the same. Back, I mean, many years ago, the guy is... You're not in the fur. You're in the fur jacket. Come on. No, no. The long, long fur jacket, white fur. So the splits. <laughs> as long the, as he's got some some killer sneakers on, then we're good. There you go. Here's what's crazy. So the splits on games with and without Devonte Adams, 18, Ooh. 18.7 points per game versus thirty points per game. But the thirty were right. in the four without Devonte Adams. No. That so, makes sense with no. the, the game, the game log. That I, we I see. mean, <laughs> the that's why like the consistency rank was twenty five, but it was even worse than that because he didn't always do it when you expected. So, I, what if we put Judge Judy on the team, not Jerry Judy? <laughs> oh, Would that I'm, change your I'll, outlook? I'll draft him just so I can watch that game. Okay. I want to watch. So the truth about Aaron Rodgers Judge Judy is, <laughs> just, please don't ever catch the ball. <laughs> You're going to oh, die. Oh goodness. But so the truth is, we're just all very confused by what Aaron. No, Rodgers that's what is. came out of there. Yes, but I I like what you said. One, if you draft him, you're kind of feeling committed to the name because you, what what's the rhetoric in your head? I just stole Aaron Rodgers in the seventh right. round. As soon as you draft him, it is. Yeah, and then and then before the season, it's they'll undoubtedly add somebody. They're going to move on from the MVS experiment. They're not going to look Durango. at Alan Lazard as the future of the team. I'm sorry, Mike. I know that you would love that to be the case. My fantasy or my dynasty oh. team. Oh, yes. Blood the sooner we rebrand that sound clip to Alan Lazard, the better. But they'll add somebody, and they'll add by subtracting Jimmy Graham. And we'll be looking at it and saying, well, maybe we can get that. So just be careful. That's what we're saying because you could end up with this past year. And I don't think a lot of Aaron Rodgers owners won fantasy titles. Yeah, well, they didn't make the playoffs. Well, they did if they if you did play play cut, if you if you picked them up off the waiver wire. All right, Carson Wentz finished the year at number ten. He was a my guy. He was consistent. He was a mech. He was as consistent as <laughs> his finish. He was a mech. He was a mech guy. Well, I mean, it started nice, ish. Man, yeah, those are mad games too. Yeah. Uh, he was number ten. His consistency rank was number ten. Now, the story of Carson Wentz, how do you want to tell that story? Do you want to tell it through the lens of the evaporation of Deshaun Jackson in game in week one? Do you want to tell it through the lens of like the weapon problems? Do you want to tell it you know, how do you want to tell that story? What is your view right. of Carson Wentz? Because I think I'm gonna end up on the apologist side for him. And I'm not sure that I, I might need to need to be told the truth i might not be able to handle it but i might need it i'm on that side as well if you, i mean you look at the first six weeks of the season he had one game where he wasn't a top 10 quarterback he was he was pretty good as the season went on and the injuries piled up you lost so many weapons to where at the end of the season you had no Aguilar, no alshon no d jacks uh, no Ertz. A, a, yeah, a banged up or no Ertz. At, did, at how a, many? How much did Ertz miss? Not much. Like a game. Yeah, and um, and you know, it was just one of those things where it's like, what, what can you do in that situation if you're him, the human, as Carson Wentz? How do you really, you know, uh, put overcome that? Put Russell there. Can he? Can he? Can Russell yeah. Wilson get it done without any weapons? So I think that has to at least be factored in now. Is he the guy that in the MVP season, you know, the Eagles just had this magical run? You know, that's probably above what we should expect. But I don't think that this season is indicative of, of his new floor. I I, I believe, and, and he still finishes the quarterback ten. Yeah, he was good in sixty three percent of games. He just didn't have those great type of performances. He ran for two hundred forty three yards, threw for over four thousand, twenty seven touchdowns, just seven interceptions. I think on the field. Uh, while there was frustration at times in Philadelphia, they overcame a lot. He found uh, a lot of Miles Sanders towards the end of the year. It was finally a weapon that he could use a little bit in the passing game. But you you put Alshon Jeffrey back, you know, you, you give him some weapons that aren't Greg Ward as his primary, and it's going to be a better outcome yeah, but if I you mean, believe in uh, Peterson and, and Wentz. I, I am still undecided where I stand on the side of this argument for Carson Wentz. I have always I've thought Carson Wentz is good. 
I, I don't see him as a great of a quarterback as you guys do. And it, this argument of, well, he didn't have weapons around him, so what could he possibly do? But if you're a great quarterback, you should be making the weapons around you better. Well, that's the argument for him finishing 10th, right. though. It, 10th, though but, right? but he was also – he still had Zach Ertz, who – one of the a top three pass catching tight end in the league, he had the breakout of Dallas Goddard, who quickly became what uh, at least a top five pass catching tight end in the game. I I totally understand where you're coming from that his his weapons his elite weapons weren't there. They were planning to go into the season with Deshaun Jackson as their field stretcher to change the offense, and they had to shuffle things around once he went out in week one. I just like this is who. This is who Carson Wentz is to me. He is he's a four thousand four to forty two hundred yard uh, passer, high twenties in terms well, let, of let touchdowns. Let me put it this way: Would you draft right here, right now? Because of course January is the best time to ask this question. Carson Wentz, Aaron Rodgers mm. in the draft. You got for fantasy. You got to choose one. Who are you taking? And then they're same cost, right? You're we're in the ninth round. They're I both would take there. Rodgers. I would take Rodgers. Uh, our produce Brooks. Our producer just put in his 2018 percentages of great, good, and bust. 73% good, 0% great. Like he was the that's exact. The, that's the who he is argument. Yes. And, and last year the apologist was injury. Yes. It was, it was the exact same yeah. argument. It was like well, Mike hard. Wallace had, was the deep threat. You had 13 games. Right. Two years ago where he was unquestionably yes. the best fantasy quarterback he and was the awesome. MVP of football. Then the injury happened. And maybe being more realistic about Carson Wentz is the smart thing to do so that you're not in the same boat as I am locked into him where I draft him. He's my every week starter no matter what. Knowing that, you know, you were okay with him this year, but if you started him from week 7 through 12, you weren't okay. You right. know, that was tough. And even those first six weeks, he's really happy that the the line is, oh, he was a top 10 guy because he was – 10, 9, 10. Like, it will be he was like, yeah, no, I was in the top 10, though. It will be very <laughs> easy for me, from me to buy into his upside. Sure. Because of, he also missed Lane Johnson for a lot of the year. The offensive line had issues. It will be easy for me if this, this is one of those situations where if on free agency, they add a piece or the draft piece, I'm going to find myself very tempted to, you know, find the value there for Carson Wentz. He was drafted as the quarterback six last year. Finished at 10. Not what you wanted. Not the kind of upside. Didn't meet the mark as far as I was concerned for the my guy standards. I don't care that every single one of my arguments was built around Deshaun Jackson. Don't care. <laughs> I don't care about that at I all. I won't even bring it I up. I won't even bring it up. Nice. He's still under contract. Matt Ryan comes in at number 11 with a consistency rank of number 12. Matt Ryan comes into our... Uh, we bring him up in discussion now, fresh with the stink of the season and that team kind of surrounding him, where they were. Um, you know, Ryan's going to have Julio moving forward. But what is Matt Ryan? What's the truth of Matt Ryan this year? 47% good games, 27% bust, 13% great, really struggled against good defenses. Yeah, he was, you know, surprisingly similar to Carson Wentz and that he he didn't really have the great games. He did have more you know week five week six he had monster games but aside from that he was just a solid quarterback and my issue is that you know I I came into this year kind of down on Matt Ryan I was arguing that their defense would not be as injured as it was two years ago but their defense was trash I mean it, it was just bad you know that's why the Dan Quinn was expected to be fired week in and week out when when the team was underperforming and and Matt Ryan would have to play catch up through the ball a lot uh, still didn't get the job done from fantasy. I, I don't think anybody that drafted Matt Ryan was extremely happy they drafted him. Obviously got agree, injured in the yeah. middle of the season. But it was a ho-hum year, and going forward, uh, you know, should we expect him to be better with another year older Julio and a year older Ridley because one yeah. gets better, one gets worse? No, I'd be or hard. more of the same? It's hard for me to go into next year – not in a similar place, this a 10th, 11th type of quarterback situation for Matt Ryan. Lost Mohamed Sanu during the year. Not sure what their running back position is going to well, look like next year. He also lost the number one fantasy tight end for a good stretch of the year when Austin Hooper went down in week 10. 
uh, missed game weeks, missed weeks 11 through 13, and then Austin Hooper clearly was struggling to get back into the rhythms week 14 and 15. And like that's when you see the stretch of Matt Ryan really, really struggling for fantasy. I'm not. It, it, I know we're talking about the same argument of Carson Wentz versus Matt Ryan, <laughs> no, but I, the message to me here is that lots of crap happens during the fantasy yes, season. Yes, that's what I'm learning. There's there's an, there's a reason a guy didn't perform for everybody. Yeah, yeah, he didn't have Sanu. He didn't have Hooper for a large stretch of his worst period of time. It was it was his highest interception count since 2015. And I took a look back because Matt Ryan is so strange with his his touchdowns, where he's always been a yardage king. But so since 2011, quarterbacks who are in that 4,400 yard range, they've averaged 31 and a half touchdowns. Matt Ryan was at 26. I mean, it's to go from 26, if he had hit that 31 touchdown mark that those that quarterbacks in that yard range average, this is a much different fantasy season we're talking about for Matt Ryan. But he's Matt Ryan, who is just apparently flukish and very random with when he wants to have massive touchdown years and when he doesn't. Well, keep in mind, he's a yo-yo career player. Oh, yes. Every other yes. year. You're talking about ping pong yes. analytics? I'm talking about ping pong this analytics. Hard hitting. Give it to us. Every other year, he's a, you know, a top five quarterback, and then the next year, he's not in the top ten. And uh, look, he wasn't in the top ten this year, so next year, top five. Here Q we go. QB 15, QB 7, QB 19, QB 2, Ooh. QB 15, QB 2, oh. QB 11. Oh, QB 2. Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Um, but here's here's the question though for Matt Ryan next year end of season Matt Ryan is the QB two are you shocked in the slightest nope because uh, I would not be. I would be shocked only because I expect it to be Mahomes and Lamar if you so if you say okay so three back to it I'll, I'll make it easy top five sure he's, he's not, back to a top five no, I wouldn't be surprised okay. no he's done it several times. All right let's uh let's bounce around to some names that we think will be relevant for next year some players that. Uh, we need to bring him out into the light. Of sure. The light of truth. Jared Goff. Let's talk about Jared yeah, Goff. I want to talk about Goff. Go for it, Mike. Number 13 is so, where he finished fantasy-wise, 11 for consistency. So Jared Goff saw just an absolute horrific regression. Uh, I mean, we talked about the Rams, how they, they just as an offense, they I highlighted how their point total dropped by over 100 points compared to last year. And he saw his attempts rise from 561 to 626. He led the league in passing attempts. And this is kind of the uh, the the anecdote of volume doesn't necessarily mean top-end fantasy production. You'd rather have an efficient quarterback than one who's just going to get volume. But So he leads, leads the league in passing attempts. Threw for 50 fewer yards than last year. Threw for 10 fewer touchdowns than last year despite an increase of 60 pass attempts. The one silver lining where it's, you have to ask, did they figure it out? After So before Tyler Higbee broke out, Jared Goff was averaging 23 completions for 272 yards and a touchdown per game. That's horrifically bad for fantasy. After the breakout, he averaged 29 completions, 329 yards, and 2.2 touchdowns. That's a 5,000-yard, 35-touchdown pace. It's only five games. I'm extrapolating in a really, really small sample. But the point is, Higby was an absolute monster. You couldn't stop him for well, the final five games. No, you couldn't, but that, that illustrates that for consecutive years, you've had a situation, yes, we saw it in the Super Bowl last year with Jared Goff. Sure. But the machine, the template, the guarantee production – that you had from the Rams last year, there have been multiple times now where they've been knocked off of kilter. They've you've had a situation here where uh, Jared Goff is wasn't the same quarterback on the road at all this year. Um, well, Brandon, or I'm sorry, uh, against top defenses, if he was playing a top defense, he couldn't overcome it. Brandon Cooks just smoke bombed and and vanished. I think part of the good, you know, if he's playing a good defense, part of the problem is a good defense has. You know, a good defensive line, and their offensive line was such a problem yeah. that they could maybe overcome that when they were playing inferior competition. I fully expect the Rams to focus in like this offseason, 
their focus has to be the offensive line. They know what their problem is. It's it's at least nice. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. I'm going to be seeing, you know, okay, did they spend a third round pick on an offensive line? Do they line? even have a third round pick? Yeah, yeah I they think have they've got no like picks. two picks in the next 17 yeah, years. 21 turnovers. 22 touchdowns, 21 turnovers. That was Jared Goff's year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't great. The Rams' year wasn't great. Gurley's year wasn't great. But I think the entirety of it falls on the shoulder of the offensive line. And so if they are able to go out and sign Balaga, you know, or, or, or something, make he's some not kind a, of – He's not a draftable quarterback to me next year, most likely. And that's fine. Most yep. likely. Because unlike Russell, who's had plenty of line problems over his career – he cannot. Jared Goff showed me this year. He cannot make something out of nothing. Do you want to wear know, cement shoes? That that part. That's part of his it training. Didn't help him to do, do that. Do you want to know who is very much draftable next year? And I think is a, Joe Namath. An, er, Joe Namath. And when you <laughs> grab Joe Namath, you start Joe Namath. That's no. right. That, that was the one hit thing us, I contributed. Hit us with Philip Rivers, Qu Jason. No, how dare you? Quarterback twenty-two on the season. Consistency rank number. two. To Ryan Tannehill, who came in and was a revelation with this offense. I was statting out things for the Ultimate Draft Kit 2020, and I just looked at the incredible disparity between Marcus Mariota and Ryan Tannehill. You're talking about 11% greater accurate. You know, 11% of your throws now are completions instead of incompletions because he can get the ball to guys, you know, hit them at the right spot. And, and, this is under the assumption that Derrick Henry is back, and that's obviously not a guarantee. He's a free agent. Maybe he goes, you know, in division to the Texans. But if Derrick Henry is back, this is a team that, you know, you 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 can't say, you know, I, we're taking Tan Hill out of the game. We're you know we're gonna let Derrick Henry beat us because he'll beat you. Um, and with the weapons of AJ Brown getting better, Corey Davis not having to be the man. I, I like Tannehill a lot. Yeah, I, I was going to ask the question, what does that really mean? Because obviously, you know, the 22, finishing 22 on the year, that doesn't matter because he didn't play the whole season. And then the consistency rank of number two, well, that kind of doesn't matter because you're not drafting him over uh, Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. You're not drafting him over Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson. But he so, won't be anywhere near. I don't believe for a second that Ryan Tannehill will be a highly drafted quarterback. I think that... Other names, 10, 11, 12 names next year will be drafted ahead of him. I could see Baker Mayfield again going ahead of Ryan Tannehill. And if you're in one of those drafts where you're grabbing him as the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th quarterback off the board, I'm all about that because he was both consistent and gave you good upside. Mike, did he give you enough games for you to feel the same way? I'm just so concerned. That it, and this is not – I'm not using analytics to – for or anything to back this up but was that just a magical thing that happened for Ryan Tannehill like it happens like Carson Wentz had a season that was pure magic oh we've seen it I mean, four times with uh Ryan Fitzpatrick where he comes yes. into the next year you think oh it's the Decker Brandon yes. Marshall year we were on fire we're going to the playoffs the next year it starts up Ryan Fitzpatrick was not a fantasy option Derek Carr a quarterback who I think is very very average to below average he had a year where he was in line to be in, in the MVP votes. I mean, th these things just – it happens. It's professional sports. It's football. Things bounce the right way in your favor. That The stat they talked about, uh, I, I believe, in the, the Kansas City uh, playoff game against, uh, against the Titans, where it was the field goal kicker, he hasn't had to make a kick in like 50 calendar days because they just kept – getting it done in the red zone and that is that's not that's not happening right for over the course of a full year so Ryan can Ryan Tannehill be anywhere close to that the quarterback that he was over the course of a season and I think these are the types of thoughts and phrases that will ensure he is not a highly drafted quarterback I, next I, year. I and, will not believe, so you're right. And and so if he is in the double-digit rounds, I want a guy who at least we've seen a stretch with this team where he was special. Uh, six games in his limited time, he was a top-six quarterback. Uh, you know, his floor was still pretty high because he runs the ball as well. So I will be in if he's, you know, in those double-digit rounds where I still expect him to be. All right. Let's not forget about Matthew Stafford. 
because oh, my his, goodness. he was so good. His fantasy finish, you know, betrays any truth about him because he only played eight games this year. But his consistency rank was number eight in those games that he played, despite being drafted as the 20th quarterback off the board. Um, he looked great on film. He 63% of the time put up a good fantasy week. It's <laughs> judging Matthew Stafford's season is impossible because he had monster games, but they were against Arizona, Kansas City when they were bad at the beginning of the year. If you remember, the, Kansas City's defense was horrifically bad, and they they got it together. Minnesota, who, <laughs> whose secondary was absolute trash, the Giants, and Oakland. That's who Stafford beat up. Now, that's all he could do, but, it's he had, a, it but is, you it didn't get to see do, big performances yes. against other teams. And he, he had poor performances of, uh, against teams whose defenses were playing well at the time. So, honestly, I have – I have no idea what to think about Stafford from last year, but it is fun to uh, check out what his 16-game pace was. <laughs> Let's have it. Because it was 5,000 yards and 38 touchdowns. Yeah. I yep. think he's got elite. There's nothing wrong looking at that pace either. He's got Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay. They're going to combine. They're going to combine for – 15 plus touchdowns and, and just I, those two guys i think uh second year i mean you know we we all got fooled by the week one tj hawkinson but tight ends don't you know we've talked about this forever tight ends don't have good rookie years that's just right. not a normal thing a uh, year two hawkinson with elite wide receivers on the outside i don't see why stafford you know he he should he should be fantastic i mean well, he's not going to be drafted i mean he's going to be stafford? somebody you can pick up right oh yeah. he'll be drafted by me I'll that, get him in the last fair. round. But it, what we're saying, in, in home leagues, people aren't going to be looking to draft Matt Stafford. I want to talk about the, the last quarterback, I think. I got we, two names. Okay. the one Maybe three if you have a different one. <laughs> one that I want to highlight, I want to talk about Drew Brees. Okay, that was one of them. absolutely dominated when he came back from his injury. This was a Drew Brees that we aren't used to seeing in any kind of recent history. Like For those who've been playing fantasy football for any length of time, you know that Drew Brees – was the man. I mean, he was a 5,000 yard on the reg, which is close to impossible to hit that mark. And he was a stud. But then the last few years, things have really, really tailored off. But this past year, he only played 11 games, but he hit his, the highest touchdown percentage of his career. Over the last three years, he's been hovering right around 5.4%, which is still respectable, but his volume had dropped down. And then he jumped up to seeing the seven percentile mark uh, and Jared Cook. Jared Cook was a huge part of it. Career so was Michael high Thomas. in touchdowns, Pro Bowler this year. Michael Thomas having a career year. But do we just have do we have the inverse Aaron Rodgers here, where we saw Alvin Kamara's touchdowns be freakishly high two years ago? They come back down to a normal human rate, and and then we see Drew Brees have a very high touchdown percent, and the the, the opposite. For Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones. Well, you need the numbers. Uh, 21 is where Drew Brees finished. Doesn't matter. Missed half the season. But his consistency was number six. So just to bring that into a uh, the that, frame of mind. And that number six is including week two when he scored negative fantasy points. Right. Because, you, you know, know he, he had a – I think he threw a pick torn, or something and then torn got, ligament. got yeah. injured. So, uh, yeah, he was, he was outstanding this year, I think. Mike's point is correct and wondering if he could sustain that touchdown rate. I would not expect him to, but he is still a guy that – Top 10 next year? That Drew Brees. has it. He's usually right yeah. around there. Ryan Tannehill, Drew Brees. I'll take Brees. As will I. Well, if they if, if they cost the same, I would definitely take Drew Brees. Well, that's fantasy I, that's finish. I mean. That's what I'm asking. Yes. Yep. yep. Um, impressive year. The other guy I just want to bring up because he – oh, he just dominated. He dominated the – commercials he dominated oh. the off season and uh <sighs> you know let's let's 2020 vision here number 20 baker mayfield consistency rank of number 20 so many 20s uh but he was but drafted Andy. as the quarterback four but man oh. someone should have put him as a bust in the ultimate draft kit but oh, oh, oh wait oh. didn't you guys <laughs> Oh what, yeah, you did. Public opinion. What do you? What would you like? But Odell Beckham was yeah was not himself. He, he was wasn't injured. there at all last year. So I don't. <laughs> you know, the hype was out of control. That was always the argument. I'm not going to sit here and say that I thought, or and I doubt you will either, that you'd get a 20th overall season from Baker with the weapons that he had. I don't think any of us saw that. 
But what we saw was that rising average draft position and said, well, you know what? He's not going to return on that. Right. Some of us went further than that and said that the entire team was a uh, going to be a cesspool of disaster, and that would be Jason, who actually – they didn't win the Super Bowl this year, so you're one for two on your two. demise. Uh, hot stat from our editor-in-chief, the Borgogan, Kyle. He t- Cyborg. He t- That's what oh, we're going with. We're going with no, Cyborg? No, Kyborg. Kyborg. Oh, Kyborg. Okay. Yeah, that's not bad, right. right? I'm on board. With the Kyborg, talked about Baker Mayfield – uh, on his breakout campaign, 20 touchdowns, zero interceptions in the red zone. That is insane. That was like old school Mariota. That is – it's not sustainable. Those are one of the things that we highlighted of – look, he's not this good because nobody is that good. And, in fact, he went the, completely the oppor- opposite direction and was tied for the lead in red zone interceptions and having the worst completion percentage among qualified starters in the red zone. So – and. I don't think he's that guy either. Let me ask you what he is. Do you, do you believe in Baker Mayfield, the future I do. valuable fantasy player? Ooh, fantasy? Uh, uh, yes, but future is the key for me sure. there because I think he's going to have a very long career, and I think he's going to be good, and he'll have decent fantasy years. Next year, which is what really matters, I think you've got to worry about how – Good this run game and how much they want to center the team around yeah. the run game, especially Stefanski. Coming- Better career statistics. Baker Mayfield, Derek Carr, when it's all said and done. <laughs> Since Mike said that Carr is incredibly average, yes. I, I, I'm using average as the barrier. Do you actually believe Baker's better than average? I do believe he's better than average. Career stats, Stefanski's going to be around for at least a couple years. Maybe. No, I he'll get him saying I think he'll get at least two maybe maybe they have success and he's there a long time but I'm just saying minimum zero two games years. this year for Baker of 25 or more points zero great games I it's I think incredible. Baker Baker will have the better stats if if for no other reason the, the league is becoming more and more of a passing league and you know we always talk about the 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 younger generation their stats will always just outperform the older generation I'd like to bet on Baker in that situation for longevity's sake and the idea that. He'll play longer than Carr will with a starting job, but I'm not so sure about it. It's a nasty good question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. I think that'll wrap it up for us. Again, a reminder, head to BeatTheBallers.com if you want in on that Super Bowl uh, Beat the Ballers competition, 10,000 buckaroos. Also, uh, UltimateDraftKit.com. Get in on the lowest possible price and get in entered into these contests. Sunday. So yes, you this got, Sunday you can go now and you can look at it. But Sunday you can you can actually thank you take care of things. The Super Bowl dip, the oh, moment you've all you, been Mike. waiting for. The dip, fellas. If you're like me, you're not very uh, handy around the kitchen. <laughs> Do you, if you left that sentence open, we were gonna fill it. You're, That's why I handled if you're it. Like me, <laughs> not so blank. We were going at it. Not so good at saving lives. Okay. Yeah, I have that one forever. Uh, but no, so the dip, a half pound of sweet Italian sausage. You brown it up. Then you take one can of Rotel. I use the mild because my my family is averse to spices because they're a bunch of cowards. And then one block of Philly cream cheese. Do not use substitute cream cheese. Use Philly, not a sponsor. But I'm just telling you your mouth For the will thank you. the sake. Yes. So half a pound sweet Italian sausage, brown it up, one can, Rotel, one block Philly cream cheese. Just throw that in any kind of slow cooker until it's melted and hot and ready to go, and you're going to look like a Super Bowl party hero. All right. It has become a staple of the Super Bowl parties here at Foot Clan headquarters. I'm sure we'll be sharing some of our festivities around the Super Bowl with you on Instagram, so you can check that out, Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers. And we want to thank Pristine Auction of course we do. Chris Godwin signed jersey yesterday, seventy-six dollars and five cents. Mm, some and there lucky are person out there. Hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions at pristineauction.com. Be sure to use the registration code Ballers when you sign up. You get ten dollars towards your first sports memorabilia purchase. That'll do it for us. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Watch responsibly. Go Chiefs. Yeah. Let's get it. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Thank you.
you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, a reminder to upgrade your game day experience and enjoy brilliant sound your way with Sonos. Every Sonos speaker is designed from the inside out for incredibly detailed sound and deep bass. Mm. Then fine-tuned by Oscar and Grammy-winning producers, mixers, artists. Uh, Getting started is super easy. Just plug in your speaker, open the app. Bingo, bingo, bongo. That's what I like to say. Go to Sonos.com to learn more.